What's up friends, it's Josh. And today we're talking about my preference in mountain bike geometry. And to be honest, it's pretty different than a lot of the stuff you probably hear from most bike reviewers. Now, bear with me real quick, because I feel like the first thing we need to do is talk about a brief history in terms of how did we get to the geometry we have right now. In the early days of mountain biking, they were pretty much just road bikes with knobby tires. They had essentially the same parts and the same geometry. If you look at a you know trail bike, like say a specialized stump jumper from 2005, 2010, you'll see that they have about the same geometry numbers as the equivalent road bike. And it was around that same time that people started to realize that that geometry doesn't work great for going up and down steep, rocky hills. And that's when we started to see this push towards what pretty much every rider calls longer, lower, slacker. Essentially, longer bikes that sit lower to the ground with a slacker head tube angle. And that change was super important, and I'm so glad it happened. But nowadays, most people judge how good a bike is based on how long it is, how low it is, and how slack it is. And I'm going to make the argument today that that might not be the best bike for everyone. And if you like the kind of stuff that I'm doing on my bike, it's probably not the best bike for you. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the five things that I think make the biggest effect in terms of making your bike feel more fun, poppy, playful. And I'm going to talk about those in the order that I think is most important. So if you're on the market for a new bike, keep this stuff in mind. The wheelbase of the bike is pretty straightforward. It's just the distance from your front axle to your rear axle, but there's a lot of things that go into making your bike shorter or longer. Things like your head tube angle, chainstay legs, reach. But the shorter your overall wheelbase is, the easier it's gonna be to maneuver your bike. So whether that's maneuvering it around a tight, steep switchback, if you're say a cross country racer, or throwing a big whip in the air if you're more into the free ride side of things. Shorter wheelbase makes it more maneuverable. On the flip side, the shorter the reach is and the shorter the wheelbase is, the more kind of twitchy the bike will feel at high speeds. So if you like doing a lot of really fast stuff, especially through maybe looser, techier terrain, you're gonna feel that shorter wheelbase as a bit of a detriment. But again, the flip side is that the shorter wheelbase will just make the bike that much more maneuverable, therefore being more poppy, playful, and fun. So if your wheelbase and your reach are the longer part of longer, lower, slacker, your head tube angle is the slacker part. Having a slacker head tube angle makes it a lot more forgiving and puts that wheel in front of you, which is much more confidence inspiring when you're going down steep, rocky stuff. And I'm gonna be honest, I love the look of a bike, especially a hardtail with a big raked out slack head tube angle. And there's a lot of benefit for that. My head tube angle is probably at about 64 degrees. So it's pretty slack by a lot of people's standards. But if we're talking exclusively about making your bike feel as poppy and playful as you can, then actually having a steeper head tube angle is going to help with that. Like I said earlier, the head tube angle is one of those things that affects your bike's overall wheelbase because the slacker it is, the farther it pushes that front wheel out in front of you. So having that front wheel tucked in close is going to make it easier to do spins, to do whips, stuff like that. Another thing that's going to be hard with a slacker head tube angle is riding jumps with big steep lips. So riding more kind of dirt jump style jumps is going to be trickier with the slack head tube angle. For me, I've found that 64 to 65 degree head tube angle to be just about perfect for the type of riding I like to do. I like to race enduro. I like to hit gnarlier black, double black trails. So having a little bit slacker front end just allows you to feel more stable when you're going downhill but I don't like it so slack, like in the 63 and under range, that it starts to feel a little weird when you go to a skate park or you do some more kind of flatland jibby type stuff. So the 64 or 65 seems to be a pretty good middle ground for me. The fourth important piece of geometry for making your bike feel that much more playful is chainstay length. And this one also is related to your wheelbase. Obviously, the longer your chainstay is from your bottom bracket to your axle, is gonna affect how long your wheelbase is. If you're wanting a bike that feels like particularly poppy and easy to bunny hop and manual, chainstay length is probably one of the most important things for you to look at. The shorter the chainstay is on your bike, the easier it's going to be to kind of pull that front end up and pivot the bike around that rear axle. I talk a little bit about this in my how to manual video that I did about kind of the physics of having that shorter lever arm as you're going over. 
but the tighter that back wheel is tucked into your frame, the easier it's gonna be to manual. Like everything we're talking about today, there is a flip side to having a short chainstay length, and that's the same kind of stability compromise. Pretty much everything that makes a bike feel more playful, poppy, and fun is also gonna make it feel a little bit more unstable and twitchy when you're riding quickly through really aggressive terrain. Now, something that I really like about this bike is it actually has adjustable chainstay lengths. So I can change the length of my chainstay by up to 15 millimeters so that I can vary it whether I want something that's gonna handle better, say, steep, loose bike park stuff, or I'm gonna go take it to a set of dirt jumps and I wanna push my back wheel closer in. While we're down here, let's talk about that last piece of geometry. It's actually the lower in the whole longer, lower slacker trend, and that's having a low bottom bracket. The lower the bottom bracket is, the lower your center of gravity is, and therefore the more kind of stable and control you're going to feel. A common analogy people talk about is saying feeling more like you're in the bike instead of on the bike. And that's really great if you wanna rip fast and just feel really stable. But again, picture a BMX bike. You're definitely not in the BMX bike. You are absolutely on top of it. And having that higher center of gravity over the bike makes it easier to maneuver that bike under you. Another more nitpicky thing about bottom bracket height and how low your frame is actually has to do with manuals. The lower your bottom bracket is below your rear axle, they call that bottom bracket drop, the harder it's gonna be to manual. Essentially, the farther you're gonna have to pull that front end up to hit your balance point. So if you're wanting a bike set up specifically for doing you know, cool wheelies and manuals, look for a bike that has a little bit less bottom bracket drop in other words, a higher bottom bracket, and that'll make it feel that much more poppy, playful, and fun. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight as to why I set my bike up the way that I do. Again, it's optimized to my style of riding, and I prefer to focus more on style and kind of having fun throwing some weird tricks than speed. As with most things in life, mountain bike geometry is a compromise. So this is by no means how I think everybody should set up their bike, but if you're looking for something that's gonna be more fun, I like to say it turns the mountain into a skate park, then consider some of these geometry features on your next mountain bike. If you found this video helpful and you enjoy learning about and watching kind of jibby, techy, playful riding, then go ahead and give us a follow. Also, if you wanna know more about how I built this bike up and the parts that I have on here, check out the bike review that I did here. Thank you as always for taking the time to watch these videos. I'm gonna go ahead back inside because it's getting pretty cold out. And uh, once all this snow melts, I'll see you on the trail.